So I want to sound a warning bell about a very disturbing trend that I see happening all across the state of Florida, and that is a dramatic uptick in foreclosure activity in our courtrooms. Now, um, for the last couple years, consumers and attorneys have lived in a false sense of security because as the 49 state attorney general investigations uh, languished on, and as the uh, Office of Comptroller and Currency and the Federal Reserve investigation of the other servicers uh, carried on, uh, most of those plaintiffs were putting holds on their foreclosure cases. So we got consumers all across the state of Florida who might have been served with a foreclosure in 2009, even 2010, 2011, who did not risk that case progressing to a summary judgment or to a sale because the plaintiffs, frankly, were not moving cases forward. Well, the environment has changed dramatically, especially just after the first of the year. Once the 49 state attorney general settlement occurred and the banks got off scot-free, that then gave them free reign to roll over and bulldoze Floridians all across the state. Now, I don't remember them talking about that as part of the settlement of a broadcast, the propaganda that was released by the banks and our state attorneys general, but that in fact is one of the very real consequences of the settlements. Um, now, you may say, well, I, I think I'm going to get some recovery out of that, or I filled in forms or whatever else. Well, look, at best, you may get a couple hundred bucks that's going to be mailed to that tent you're living in because you've now been foreclosed on and thrown out into the street. And we still have people coming in here and talking about robo-signing or fraudulent affidavits or fraud in a court file. But the fact of the matter is that the government has chosen to excuse all of that conduct and to hold no one accountable. So for consumers who were the target of the fraud and the forgery and the robo-signing and all of the bad things that we see within these foreclosure files, You'll find that the government, and specifically the attorneys general, the Fed, and the Office of Comptroller and Currency did absolutely nothing to uh, help in your individual foreclosure case. At best, you may get a couple hundred bucks. So, again, the warning bell that's being sounded now, uh, just this week, I've had four people come in who had been served in 09 and 10, um, who didn't understand or recognize that the hearing notice that they got, which was a summary judgment hearing notice, or a trial notice meant that if they didn't retain an attorney, in all likelihood, they were going to be losing their home in a very short time. So let's talk about that. A uh, fundamental question I want to ask is, does a homeowner who's in foreclosure have a right or an expectation to have an honest and a fair treatment in a court of law? Obviously, that's a rhetorical question. Uh, unfortunately, what we find happening again and again in courtrooms is that homeowners do not get fair treatment in courtrooms. Um, judges that are ignoring the rules of evidence, that are ignoring the uh, substantive law, and ignoring the rules of procedure, all so that banks can get final judgments and set foreclosure sales. Now, much of what happens in a courtroom uh, is discretionary. A judge can decide to rule one way or the other. And what you see happening far too often are, are conduct occurring and rulings that are being made which would be unthinkable in any other courtroom. You know, specifically, when you have robo-perjurers or these people testifying on behalf of the banks and institutions and you're challenging them, making very specific objections to the testimony that they're providing um, and the judge is overruling those objections. Now, if you shared those same uh, case studies with practitioners in any other area of the law, I think about criminal law in particular, if, if you share the objections that foreclosure defense practitioners were making, hearsay objections, foundation objections, authenticity objections, in any other courtroom, uh, the judge would absolutely sustain those objections and require the witness to testify uh, based on personal knowledge or to better support the allegations and the claims that they're making. But, in fact, that's not happening in foreclosure courtrooms. So you have this quite disturbing phenomenon of robo-perjurers or individuals that are being popped up on the stand and are testifying based on information that is not in their personal knowledge but is based on records that, likewise, are not properly vetted or understood by the witness that's testifying. Now, um, again, it's our obligation as defense practitioners to dissect the case incredibly uh, well before you go into trial. The trial preparation necessary for even a, a typical foreclosure defense case is an incredible amount of hours because you simply cannot take anything for granted. And so it is necessary to go in and deconstruct every single element. Now, for years I've been a big proponent of pro se litigants, but the fact of the matter is that going into these trials, even for very, very experienced practitioners, 
um, it's oftentimes walking into an ambush. And, you know, I just saw a trial recently where a very good practitioner from here locally walked in and I think he made about a hundred objections and every single one of them were overruled. That's just absurd, but it's an example of what's happening in courtrooms and shows you that even for experienced practitioners, it's a very hostile environment. And so the warning is definitely out there to homeowners. Do not think for a moment that you're going to walk into a courtroom and that you're going to be able to save your house by raising any of the things that you might have read about on the Internet for the past years. One other important point. You cannot wait until it is noticed for trial or summary judgment before hiring an attorney. What's happening is when the courts are unilaterally or proactively moving to set cases for trial, once it's set for trial, your opportunity to make defenses and affirmative defenses and, and respond to that case may very well have closed. And so you have lost the opportunity to properly defend your case. And if it's not set up properly with defenses uh, and responses, then you cannot raise any allegations within the courtroom. The message is simple. That is, the courtroom is a very serious business. And uh, especially now in these dangerous times, it's necessary for consumers to get out there and hire experienced, and I can only stress that enough, experienced practitioners. You have to stay away from these loan audit and mitigation scams because most of that information is entirely irrelevant and totally inadmissible courtroom. I say that over and over again because we have consumers again and again who spend thousands of dollars on this scam information from all across the country with people promising them results which are frankly um, impossible. So the, th the thing to keep in mind is that Nothing that the federal government, the state government has done in these foreclosure settlements is going to protect you when your case is set for trial. The only thing that can protect you is an attorney that can go in there and, and competently represent your interests.